So here is my Fortinet firewall. Uh, it's a virtual firewall that I have got running in EVNG. You can see here's my desktop here. There's the firewall itself. I've got some uh, Windows server set up behind that in the domain. Uh, and I also have a remote client that I'm going to be attempting to SSL VPN into the network from. Here's a slightly prettier picture to let you know what we're trying to achieve. So the first thing uh, I would like to do is to change the management port for the, from the firewall. Well, we're managing it from outside anyway. Uh, and if the HTTPS management port is on TCP443 is, is by default, then that's going to start fighting with your SSL VPN. So I'm just going to change the management port for the outside of the firewall to 4433. And now I'm going to reconnect. And as you can see, I'm now connected to the management front end of the firewall from, out, from outside on 4433 rather than the default HTTPS port of 443. Another thing that we need to set up is the DNS or where the firewall is looking up its DNS because we're going to use LDAP-S so we're going to need to have to resolve the name on the certificates or Kerberos certificates on our domain controllers. So we need to resolve our internal host names. So I'm putting my internal DNS servers in there. Now I'm going to jump onto my Windows server um, and I am going to extract the CA certificate because that's on my, also my certificate services server because I need to import that certificate onto my FortiGate. The reason why we're going to be doing that is so that the firewall will trust certificates that have been issued by that CA server namely the Kerberos server or the domain controller that we're going to be using LDAP S lookups on. We've got system certificates and we're going to import this certificate. Select CA certificates, file, upload, and that's the certificate, the certificate that I just exported on my Windows box. Click open, OK. Now you will see it, it's come up on the bottom of the screen there, remote CA certs. Take a note of what the name is, CA underscore cert underscore one, because you're going to need that in a minute. So, now that we've got all the prerequisites set up for LDAP, I'm going to create an LDAP server, which will be my Active Directory server. So it's my DC. Now put in the FQDN of the server rather than the IP address. If you put the IP address in, then the IP address has to exist on the digital certificate of the server, which it does not by default. And we're not using port 389, we're using port 636 because that's LDAP S and it is more secure. I'm going to change the common name identifier to SAM account name. And I'm going to put in the distinguished name of the top level of my domain. Now, you can put in a, a, an OU where all your users and groups are going to be below that if you want to, but I'm just going to put the top level of my domain in there. It's not an exchange server. I want to perform a regular bind, which means I need an Active Directory username and password to be able to bind to Active Directory. Now, this doesn't have to be a domain administrator or anything special, just a normal run-of-the-mill domain user, and I've got one set up for this purpose called LDAPS user. I want a secure connection, I want to use LDAP-S, and I want to use that certificate. And if you go in the drop down, this is why I asked you to take a note of the name of the certificate. You can see, you select it out of the list, test connectivity, and that's just connected. Now, just as an extra belt and braces, you can put in a username and password from your Active Directory. And just test authentication works against your domain controllers. And there is my LDAP server ready. Now back in my Active Directory, I'm going to create an Active Directory security group that I'm going to put the users into that I want to be able to access the remote access SSL VPN. So I'm just going to create a normal global security group in Active Directory call it GSVPN 
users and I'm going to put in my domain user object into that group just for testing. Okay, so back on the firewall, I'm now going to cre create a firewall group. And I'm going to call that FWVPN users. Now into the firewall group, I'm going to put that Active Directory group. Might seem a little bit convoluted, but this is the way it needs to be done. So I'm going to add in a remote group under remote server, select the LDAP S server that I've just created. And if I drill down into my Active Directory, there's my group there. You need to right click and add selected. Double clicking doesn't work. To make sure that you've got it correct, you should see your LDAP S server there and then the distinguished name of your Active Directory group in there. That's how you know that it's worked properly. Click OK. And there you can see I've got my firewall group already configured. So if I go to VPN, SSN VPN profile, I'm going to create a profile to connect to. Give it a sensible name. I'm going to leave split tunnel in enabled. Source IP pools, this is a, a pool of IP addresses. It's going to get allocated to your remote clients when they connect. Give it a sensible name. And then set the type to IP range. And then the syntax is the lowest IP address dash the highest IP address. You also need to specify what interface it's going to be applicable to. And in this case, that's the SSL VPN tunnel interface. And click OK. You can now use that is an object in policies, etc. So I'm going to add that in to the source IP pools. Now scroll down to portal message and you can put this, this is the title that will appear when you connect to your VPN portal at the top of the page. And you can also select a sort of color scheme if you like. I'm going to leave that set on blue you can change it depending on whatever your corporate colors are and make sure enable the 40 client download has been enabled and click OK and there's our VPN portal set up now we need to adjust the SSL VPN settings yours might look a little bit different if it's out of out of the block so you won't have a, an outside interface and there you might need to manually add yours in You'll notice there's a caveat there about um, it's a self-signed certificate. Um, in a production environment, you'll want to purchase a publicly signed certificate. Select address range, specify address range. The one that's in there is from a previous lab, so it's not the one that we've just created. So add in the one that we've just created, VPN remote IP pool. Scroll down and now we need to create a portal mapping. So select our group that's our firewall group that we created earlier and our portal and that ties the two things together click OK and click apply now if it complains that the other ones not configured or that there's an error you just need to configure the other one and set it to a web access now we need to last thing is on firewall policy, underneath policy and objects, yours might say IPv4 policy if it's an older firewall. Create a new firewall policy. Give it a sensible name. Select the incoming interface, which will be the SSL VPN. The outgoing interface will be the inside or the LAN interface. Source will be your remote VPN pool. And you also need to add on your firewall VPN users group 
enter there as well. Destination, local LAN. Schedule always serviced, set to all. That will accept by default. Disable NAT. And change generate logs when session starts to on. And click OK. That is our policy configured. So what we need to do now is jump on our external host and browse to the outside IP address of the firewall. Log on with my username that was in my A to user group. And on this particular machine, I don't have the Forti client installed, so I can download the Forti client for Windows. For the purpose of the video, I've sped the following up. It's relatively easy to install the Forti client. We're only installing the remote access VPN element. not putting any APT stuff on and let it install click finish now you can launch it once it's up and running directly from the system tray or from the Windows start menu of course when it's finished updating and giving me messages Launch the Forti client and go to Remote Access. Configure VPN. Give your connection name a sensible name. Ensure, of course, that SSL VPN is selected at the top. In the remote gateway, put in either the public IP address of the FortiGate firewall or the FQDN that's on the publicly signed certificate that you're going to use. And I'm just going to tick the box there to not warn about invalid service certificates because I'm using a self-signed one. Click save and then with my domain credentials I should be able to log in. He says optimistically. Yep, there we go. That's me connected externally to the VPN. And just to give that a test, you can uh, see if I can ping my Active Directory server, which is 192.168.1.122. There we go. That's me up connected. Then to simply disconnect or break the VPN, hit disconnect. And that's you done. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.pnetlive.com.